Jordan Peterson, he is a sophisticated and nuanced thinker. He does pull from many different sources. He does read a lot. He does study a lot. He brings in a lot of information into his lectures and so forth, which is great. So in that sense, he's yellow. Uh, so maybe he's 50% yellow. Maybe he's 80% yellow. I don't know. Uh, I ultimately don't know these people well enough to, to make a, a fully accurate evaluation of them. Only they can know where they're really at. But again, I think Peterson is stuck in certain regressive elements of orange and blue because he's uh, he's sort of stuck on this uh, pushing this sort of masculinity agenda. I don't I don't know what that is about. That seems very regressive to me. He's also stuck on this sort of moralization um, in the same way that that same Har Sam Harris is um, not willing to admit that morality is uh, an invention of of the human mind. Um, and, um, and there's still a sort of ideology there. You just like, there's not a recognition of, of the entire spiral. There's not a recognition of really like trying to, to truly see the world from, from different perspectives. It's still kind of a pushing of his perspective on the world, which you see him doing. So that's holding him back. When you hear about universities being very liberal and progressive, the social justice warriors, uh, political correctness, LGBTQ rights, gender pronouns, protecting minorities, postmodernism, feminism, all of this that I'm talking about here now is getting into the Jordan Peterson territory, what he calls the neo-Marxists. Now, uh, just very quickly, the problem with this, Jordan Peterson is a complicated figure. Again, I can't really go into all the nitty gritty details here, but just so you kind of understand the, the, the big picture. A lot of the scientific stuff he talks about, he talks a lot about psych psychological studies and, and Jungian archetypes and all this sort of stuff. That's fine. It's not a problem. Most of that stuff is, is, is accurate and you can learn some good lessons from that. The problem is that Jordan Peterson sneaks in his sort of, uh, eh, sort of conservative uh, political agenda into all of that in a sort of sneaky way. And what he does is he actually demonizes all of green. He takes this green category, which is this very broad category of all sorts of people. And most of them are very sane, very rational, very down to earth people. They're not crazy, uh, radical leftists, right? Most people are not that but he demonizes them because of some negative experiences that he personally has had within universities. Fine, he had a few negative experiences. Okay, I'll grant him that. But that doesn't mean that now every green or progressive person is a neo-Marxist. The problem with calling green people neo-Marxists is that the people who are listening to Jordan Peterson tend to sit in the blue to orange end of the spectrum of spiral dynamics. So when they start to hear neo-Marxists, they start to think of Marxists, the Soviet Marxists the communists. So that triggers in them that sort of stereotype. And now they have this knee jerk reaction against all the green stuff. Now Jordan Peterson, in a sense, radicalizes these people. And now these people get more stuck within blue and within orange. And they start to cling to that. And they are now not opening up to the next stage they need to pass through. See, green is not the end stage. Green is a stage you will pass through. Does green have excesses and dangers? Of course. Of course, are there unhealthy manifestations of green? Of course, every stage on the spiral has unhealthy manifestations. The danger is to overly focus on the unhealthy aspects of the stage above you, because when you do that, you demonize that stage, you judge it so much that you can't actually pass through it. And so Jordan Peterson himself is suffering from this because what he would really want to do if he wanted to develop himself to the highest levels and to actually connect with the God that he talks about so much, in theory, if you wanted to connect with it in practice, is that he would actually need to let go of his political agenda against the neo-Marxists, let that shit go, and then go and actually like go to Burning Man, hang out with these people, realize that these are these are fun, loving, cool people. They're not uh, crazy radical leftists. And you will realize like, oh, there's something I can learn there. I need to open my heart. I need to open, there's, I need to open the the intuitive capacities of my body and my, and my mind. And I need to uh, become much more right-brained than left-brained. I need to see the limitations of orange and blue that I was stuck on. And then I will go into green. I will join green and I will ultimately pass through green into, or into yellow and turquoise and so forth. You see? So the problem is that there's sort of this barrier. 
Peterson's creating the sort of barrier for other people not to pass through, including for himself. And that's a shame. So that's uh, that's my gripe with Peterson. Um, and Peterson has some elements of yellow as well, uh, but he can't fully enter yellow because he's still so busy judging and being angry. You can see the anger and the bitterness just in his tone. You can feel it. There's, there's some kind of deeper shadow side anger issue that he hasn't resolved, and that's why he's got this axe to grind against the neo-Marxist. So what I recommend is that you drop this label neo-Marxist because really green, it, it's a real disservice to call them neo-Marxists because Marxists were actually blue and red. Those were Soviet Marxists. These green that we're talking about, they are not going to uh, create some sort of radical revolution to destroy society the way that Jordan Peterson paints it out to be. It's not going to be like that. That's not what they want. What they want is they want a softening of this just stifling capitalism. They want a softening of that. And you may agree or disagree with the politics there, and you may have your opinions about how far green we should go, and that's all fine. And you can criticize some aspects of green because there are some excesses of green. That's fine. But the main thing is that you want to grow into green and past green rather than waste your time criticizing it. And the more you start coming up with these uh, stupid labels like social justice warriors and feminazis and all this and neo-Marxists, you come up with these labels, it doesn't help you to develop yourself. It only hinders you. So again, the conservatives and blue and orange will make a big boogeyman out of socialism. Again, this conflates the socialism of the Soviet era and the Chinese style socialism, which is actually blue, it's a dogmatic, ideological, hierarchical form of, of socialism, and actually that's why it failed, um, versus socialism at green. Socialism at green is not interested in, for example, eliminating private property and confiscating all your wealth. That's not what it wants to do. Yes, socialists want to tax you more. Yes, they want more government programs. Yes, they have liberal uh, policy positions you may or may not agree with. Yes, of course. But don't paint them as this boogeyman, like they're going to come and they're going to take away all your private property. No. Look at how socialism works in Northern European countries, for example. Uh, they still have private property. Sure, they have high taxes and stuff, and maybe you don't want to go there. Maybe you don't want that kind of politics in America. That's fine. That's your prerogative. That's your perspective as blue and orange. But don't paint this out to be a boogeyman. Socialist societies definitely work. We see examples of them working, and in many ways, they work better than American societies. Those societies have better access to health care. They generally have more equality. They have uh, benefits for, for mothers, maternity leaves, vacation, and all this. So there's a lot of good stuff that comes from those kinds of policies. So be careful into falling into this Jordan Peterson trap of painting the socialists of green with the socialists of blue. Because Jordan Peterson will tell you like, oh, but look at all the evils of the 20th century and how terrible that was and how many tens of millions or hundreds of millions of people died under socialism. Um, that is what I mean by creating a boogeyman. That is not what happens with green socialist leaning policies. Now, of course, there can always be excesses. At every stage, there can be excesses. At every stage, policy can be damaging in different ways to different segments of society. So, of course, there can be excess. And I'm not saying that socialism should just be let, you know, free reign to do anything it wants. Of course, if you do that, there will be excesses and dangers. But that's true of, of any policy, whether it's conservative or liberal. You always need moderation. You always need balance. You always need harmony. Have you seen the ultra spiritual guy on YouTube? So he is criticizing. Well, he's not criticizing. He's basically making a mockery of all the excesses of green. That's what he's doing. And that's why his channel is so popular. So the problem with it, though, is that I get the sense that a lot of blue slash orange people watch the ultra spiritual guy. And of course, they laugh. It's super funny. And everything he says is, has a, a, a ring of truth to it. But the problem is that if you're at stage orange or orange blue and you're watching these videos and you're laughing and you're ridiculing green, the problem is that, again, it's going to create this sort of 
Jordan uh, Peterson style demonization stereotype in your mind of green, and then you're not actually going to be able to grow into green because you've been laughing at it for three years solid. You see the problem with that? So, I mean, you can definitely make fun of green, but make sure that you're not taking that too seriously. Like, make fun of green, but don't actually think that green is bad. Because you should see yourself as becoming green, and then, of course, transcending green. Green can deny differences too much. This is one of the things, for example, that uh, Jordan Peterson will rant about is how green will deny deny the differences between men and women, between the different curves. There's curves and there's outliers, and outliers can be very extreme and very significant. And that's true because green's overarching bigger picture is that everyone is equal. Now, of course, a conservative will say, oh, that's so ridiculous. Everyone is not equal. There's truth in both perspectives. There's a partial truth in both perspectives. Of course, everyone is not equal. Of course, not all cultures are equal. Of course, not all races are equal. Of course, not everyone has the same IQ. Of course, not uh, uh, all the features and characteristics and, and strengths and weaknesses of men and women are the same. Men and women are asymmetrical. They have different strengths and weaknesses. But what Green is saying when it says everyone is equal is it's saying that everyone should have an equal right to basic, uh, you know, health care, housing, uh, uh, economic prosperity. So it doesn't literally mean that men are equal to women. And so there's a sort of a... a, a a false debate that then gets set up between like blue and orange and green and they start to argue and then like the blue and orange side argues, no, we're all different. And the green side argues, no, we're all equal. Well, they're really just talking about the same thing in different ways. And a lot of times they, they fail to see that because they're too stuck in their own perspective. The problem with green is that it is too stuck in its own perspective, this perspective of equality. That's an admirable perspective. It's an admirable intention. But again, you can't cling to anything too much. And when you start to turn it into an ideology or a philosophy, what it does is it restricts your creativity, it re restricts your fluidity. And then that creates problems. The name of the game here is to have a flexible mind. That's always been the name of the game. That's what I've been trying to teach you with Actualize.org all this time. When I talk about epistemology, I talk about freeing your mind of webs of belief. It's all about freeing your mind. Liberation, that's ultimately what you're going to. You're trying to liberate your consciousness from every single mental construct that holds you down. Whether it's a blue construct, an orange construct, or a green construct. Now again, I'm, I'm giving you lots of examples of people in every one of these spiral episodes that I do. And the reason I do that is because I think that it helps you to see how practical spiral dynamics is and how you can actually apply it in your own life. Because if I just came up here and I just gave you a bunch of abstract principles and values, you wouldn't see how it connects. That's why I give you all these political examples and controversial examples and all this sort of stuff. A lot of these people, I don't know them personally and I haven't read and studied all of their work in depth. So my evaluations of them could be misguided, or maybe I'm only seeing a certain facet of their personality, but not the full thing. Um, that's because I'm just kind of throwing this out there loosely for you. You should take this model and apply it for yourself, and you might have different evaluations. You might look at some of these people that I've categorized as yellow or orange or green or blue, and you might say, no, Leo, they're really something else. They're higher or they're lower. Okay, fine. That's what I want you to do. Don't just take these examples blindly from me. Think through them for yourself. And ultimately, remember that um, it's not about evaluating other people. It's mostly using this as a tool for growing yourself. So the person you should be most concerned about evaluating is yourself, and that's why I'm giving you all these examples.